myself. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Mira Bert Wintonic, and I am the filmmaker of Wintopia. It's a film about um, my father and his search for utopia, um, but it's also a film about a filmmaker and his relationship with art, and it's a film about a daughter and her relationship with her father. So it's kind of three films in one. It's me trying to get to know my dad through finishing his final film, which was a film about utopia. So it's kind of a meta film in a way that you're watching me trying to figure out how to put my dad's footage together uh, that he left behind. Yeah, I guess it's because it was my dad's like dying wish to have a film be made about his life and that would kind of portray his search for utopia and his search through films to make the world a better place. So I didn't feel like it was an option to not finish it as hard as it was. And it also felt like this weight that was on my shoulders. And until I finished it, I would always feel that pressure, that that burden weighing on me. So I did feel like I would I had to finish it at some point. But at the same time, the two years that I took off were so crucial because I was able to like stop trying to make his film with the footage. And I came back to the film after that break and realized I could only make my film and I, I couldn't keep trying to make the film that he would have made. It was just impossible. So it kind of allowed me to make it a much more personal story. It makes it a richer, more authentic film. Oh, that it's impossible to plan and to just <laughs> like, there was, I had like 300 hours of footage or something like that. And I find it's almost impossible to intellectually approach it. I feel like it has to be a bit more of an intuitive process. As much as we tried to kind of map it out, it's like you just have to kind of try things and try things again. It's kind of like making a puzzle, but like there's no box that the puzzle comes in, so you don't know what the puzzle looks like yet. And like the pieces could fit together in a hundred different ways each. And you just have to kind of try them out and see what happens when you move things around. Uh, especially for a film like this, which was so personal, it was kind of just also a process of figuring out my own emotions and how I felt about the story as we were going along so it was like that extra layer of not just approaching it as a creative project but also like a grieving process yeah i mean it was hard in some sense but also some of it was clear more obvious than others um you know there was hundreds of tapes but a lot of the tapes were my dad just like would leave the camera on for 20 minutes filming these fields and i didn't know why the why he was there or what the field, fields had to do with anything. So like there was chunks that were kind of easy to dismiss or sometimes he would put the camera down next to him on the seat of the car as he's driving and just like forget to turn it off. So there's like half an hour of his car seat as he's driving around. So there was a lot that was easy to discard, but then uh, there was also a lot of really beautiful, like really poetic imagery that was kind of hard to know what to keep. And I guess ultimately it was about um, trusting that just a little bit of each moment or a taste of things is better than too much and to kind of leave people wanting more and just giving little hints and shadows and glimpses rather than uh, dwelling too long on things. The last year of the project I worked with an editor named Anuk Deshain so it was really helpful to have her in the editing room with me and also she's someone who didn't know my dad so it was really interesting to have that perspective. Some fresh eyes who could kind of be a bit more objective, create a different perspective as I was trying to make a film that would be interesting to someone who didn't know him just as much as it would be interesting to someone who did know him so it was kind of helpful to have that balance in the room. Uh, well, Concordia was a really great place um, just to meet people and to like, get inspired by other people that were excited about making films and telling stories. I was in communication studies, then I specialized in the sound stream. And it's really where I discovered that I wanted to do audio documentaries. At first, I was kind of thinking about my role in a film, in, in the film industry. But in my sound classes that I had at Concordia, I realized, oh, if you're doing sound documentaries, you get to do everything. You get to be the editor, the director, the mixer, the writer. You can do all of it as just one person, whereas with a film, you need such a huge crew. So that was really exciting to me. And ultimately, it's what I did in my 15 years of career in audio storytelling that really helped me shape this film. Like ultimately, just approaching it as an audio piece, like I said before. Um, but I, a lot of that understanding of storytelling and of audio storytelling, I learned at Concordia. Um, yeah, I guess it's a little bit of both. I mean, the program was a really nice mix of technical skills and theoretical skills. 
And so we learned how to use Pro Tools and like how to edit audio. But then at the same time in the film classes, I feel like you learn so much about making films by watching, just watching a lot of films and sort of analyzing what's good about them and what's bad about them. It's almost easier when there's something bad about them so you can sort of see like, okay, why is that not working? What would they have needed to do differently? And just through through that experience of watching films in our field film theory classes at Concordia, you know, you're just exposed to so much that you can start to piece together what your taste is and what draws you to certain stories. I think that's yeah, one of the most fundamental thing is being able to recognize what's good and what's bad or what you think is good or bad. And first learning to try to emulate that and then trying to make your own rules or find your own rules within. Yeah, I think my first love is really still sound and audio documentaries. I just love like the intimacy of just recording someone with a mic and not having a camera or like a crew. And I just, I find you can get such intimate little details um, that way. Or I find, I feel more comfortable just with the mic. But it was really interesting to be working on the, a film, especially a film where I didn't have to film anything. It's all found footage. So I sort of treated the film like an audio project and just did audio interviews uh, instead of actually filming new interviews with people. Uh, partly because I didn't want to burst the bubble of my dad's footage because um, it was so emotional for me to have that footage where he's so alive in these moments. And so cutting away to like talking heads or something would have felt really inappropriate, I think. Whereas just having audio that's overlaid on top of the image just felt, felt like it could preserve his presence and add my presence as well. Well, I guess like growing up with my dad, with a father filmmaker, I just kind of was always immersed in that world in documentaries. Like we'd watch a lot of films at home and talk about them. And people were always sending him rough cuts of their films to give notes on. So I thought that was really interesting to get a peek behind the process of like making films. And uh, yeah, it's just never felt like a huge question. That's just something that I was interested in. I was interested in storytelling and just the art form of crafting a narrative and especially editing. Editing, I've always been really interested in editing. Um, so then I yeah, started studying film and then eventually got more interested in doing sound design for film and that kind of thing. And then fell into audio documentaries that way. Wow. Wow, because you want something that you'd be able to rewatch over and over and not get bored of um, if you're going to really only have three things. So I feel like it might not be my top three favorite films, but stuff that you can really rewatch. I mean, one of my favorite films that I've seen in recent years of documentaries is Honeyland. I think it's a really beautiful story with really beautiful characters. You know, the Royal Tenenbaums was always a favorite as a young film student. And I don't know, maybe Die Hard, something silly. <laughs> A classic. <laughs> I think one of my big influences was a Camera Person, which is a documentary by Kirsten Johnson. She's a documentary camera person and she takes outtakes of all the films that she's made in her career and creates a portrait of herself behind the lens. Um, and there's not really a story per se, like there's no narration, it's just like clips of these different films, but you get to know her so much by what she's choosing to film. And that was a huge inspiration. As I was making my film, that's what I was trying to do as well, was make a film about the man behind the camera. And I was kind of trying, struggling with it and working on it for years. And then I saw her film and I was like, okay, good, I'm on the right track. Like, this is possible. You can make a film about the person like behind the camera, not just in front of it. It's a really beautiful, powerful film and really understated and, and just kind of allows the images to say a lot without adding, in her case, any dialogue on top of her. Yeah, I mean, I, I loved making this film, um, but it also made me really appreciate audio storytelling. And um, yeah, I'm still hesitant to make a film where I would need to use a camera and like a crew. So I think I would be interested in making another film, but if I could approach it in a similar way where it's a found footage film, or animation, but where the story is really happening in the audio realm. So I'm curious about those kinds of possibilities, or maybe finding another box of tapes uh, full of some interesting projects. I mean, I think really the most important thing and what took me a long time to figure out with this film is like, what are you trying to say? with your film and why are you, why are you making it? <laughs> like there's so many films out there and there's so much content that I think if we're gonna add some new creative 
content into the world, it's really important to know what, why you're doing it. It can be personal reasons or it can be, you know, it can be whatever you want, but just to have a sense of like, what are you trying to say? What are you hoping people are going to get out of, out of watching it? And that can take a while to, to focus in on. Um, but I think without that, it's kind of hard to find your footing and your grounding as you're making it. Um, advice that my dad gave me was like, making the film that only you can make. Don't try to make a film that someone else could make or that you think you should make. But what's the story that only you can tell? What's the perspective you bring to the story? If it's not a personal story, you can still have some interesting creative approach or some creative perspective. Um, so I think that's really important. What do you bring to the story? Why should you be the one to tell this story? And, and what are you trying to say?